everyone, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a review and demo of the somewhat new Rimmel Lasting Finish Foundation. This isn't actually a new foundation, it is a reformulated foundation. They had this before and a lot of people did like this before. This is the 25 hour wear with comfort serum. It has broad spectrum SPF 20 sunscreen in it which is really good for the summer and I am in the shade 200 soft beige it's what's on my face right now I did do a little demo of this and I'll show you that a little bit later I noticed that you didn't really find a whole lot of information on the US website but on the UK website you actually do find this foundation and some more information on it and I also noticed that the UK version of this has a pump where this one, the one that's released in the United States, does not have a pump and I really wish it did because it's so just ugh, I just I hate having to pour things out so I might actually order a pump for this I don't know so this was a reformulated foundation it used to be in a squeeze tube which I feel like is so much more practical than having it in just a glass jar especially because when I first bought this I dropped it in the parking lot in the bag that it was in it fell and it shattered and I had to go buy a completely new one and I feel like if it was in a squeezy tube it would not have done that I mean, I know it wouldn't have done that. So yeah, squeezy tube would have been so much better. This foundation comes with one fluid ounces or 30 milliliters in here. And also, you can find this from anywhere from six, around $6.50 to $7.99. I think on the website it says it's about $6.50 or so. I got this in Walmart for about $6.50, but then when I had to repurchase it, I got it at CVS for $7.99. So it depends on where you go. Obviously at Walmart it's going to be a little bit cheaper than a regular drugstore like CVS. It actually has two sunscreens. It has titanium dioxide and it has oxinate. Oxinoxate? Octinoxate. <laughs> I can never say that. Octinoxate, um, it's both a physical and a chemical sunscreen if you guys wanted to know so you get some good coverage as far as sun protection. It's only available in eight shades, which I really wish it had a larger variety of shades and I'll explain that in a little bit. So the claims, I noticed that the claims on the website and the claims on the actual bottle are not the same. Like on the actual bottle, it claims to be a full coverage skin perfecting foundation where on the website it actually says that it's supposed to be a medium coverage and I actually believe the whole medium coverage more than the full coverage. It actually is more of a medium coverage for me. It blends into the skin for a nude poreless effect. It's supposed to be hydrating and moisturizing, and it's supposed to be sweat, heat, humidity, and transfer proof for up to 25 hours. So I have combination skin. I actually have been having combination dry skin since my pregnancy. Um, it used to be combination oily, so I haven't had a whole lot of issues with my T-zone getting super, super oily, but some oil still peeks through around my T-zone. Uh, it just, it's not nearly as tense as it used to be. It does have a medium coverage with a brush, medium to buildable coverage with a brush if you apply it with a kabuki brush. Um, and it has more of like a satin finish, but if you apply it with a damp beauty blender, I think you can get more of a slightly dewy finish. I mean, I applied it with a beauty blender now and it's still more of a satin finish. It just depends on how moisturized your skin is, I guess. Before that, um, I noticed with a beauty blender, you get more of like a light to medium coverage, more toward buildable medium, where with a foundation brush, like a kabuki, um, I have this flat top kabuki right here. With a brush like this, you can get more of a medium to buildable, but it's still not a full coverage foundation, at least not on me. I do have acne scarring that needs to be covered up, and this does not cover it up completely. There's only eight shades, which is really bad in my opinion, because you really don't have a whole lot of variety as far as shades. And I also noticed that a lot of these shades have a pink undertone, like a cool undertone, and I'm warm. So I was actually able to find a shade that didn't show as pink on my skin, but it's still more of the, on the pink side than I would like. Um, and I, that's kind of unfortunate because you kind of, you don't have a whole lot of options as far as shades. And I also noticed that it doesn't go very, very dark. So if you have a darker skin tone, you might not be able to find a shade that matches you perfectly. But I really just took note on the fact that most of these shades, of the eight shades, a lot of them have more of a pinky undertone than a yellow undertone. It feels very much like my skin, which I like about this foundation because I don't 
really feel it. If I'm caking on this foundation to get as much coverage as possible, yeah, you will feel it around your dry areas. But I try not to do that because I don't want a full coverage. I want just an everyday natural finish and I don't want it to cake up in my dry areas. So for that, it does feel like skin on my face. This is a very heavily perfumed foundation. Um, it has a very strong scent. It just... It smells good. It smells like shampoo or like a body wash. But I'm just letting you guys know if that's something that bothers you, you might like you might not like this foundation because it just has such a strong scent, which I don't notice on my skin after I apply it. Like after a few minutes of it being on my skin, I don't notice it. But just the whole applying it to the skin, if you're very sensitive to perfumes like that, you might not like this foundation because it is very, very heavily, heavily perfumed. In areas that I have some dryness, like around my nose, um, around my cheeks, like the ends of my cheeks and and like my smile lines it does tend to cake up in those areas so if you're somebody who has a lot of fine lines and wrinkles this might not be the foundation for you I actually don't even recommend this foundation for you unless you heavily moisturize because this could settle and cake up in those areas um, if you have normal skin normal combo skin I think this will work for you but just note that if you have some dry skin or dry patchy areas on your skin that this will cling to it which it doesn't bother me too much because it doesn't cling to it too bad just note that you do have to moisturize this does not cover redness on me um, I have redness around my nose like I said and let me bring out the mirror um, it covers it a little bit but if you have a ton of redness it's not gonna cover it you're gonna need some kind of correcting primer underneath this to kind of minimize the redness a little and the acne scarring it's not a full coverage foundation it helps even out my skin tone but it doesn't hide all my acne scars so if that's something that you're looking for this is not for you um, I like a more natural finish so I don't mind it too much I have to disagree with the claim that this is, is supposed to be like a hydrating moisturizing foundation I don't find it to be like that if I don't put a moisturizer and a hydrating primer underneath this foundation I do feel like this foundation can feel very tight in my dry areas so I don't agree with the claim that this is supposed to be moisturizing and hydrating I just don't feel that that's what it is for me if you have any areas that are oily it will transfer so I don't agree with the claim that this is transfer proof because around my nose and a uh, nose around my chin and around my nose like this area is where I do get a lot of oil and on my chin and a little bit on my forehead and if I touch my nose at all any of my nose area where it's oily it will transfer and like that redness will peek through again so that's something to keep in mind I don't know about it lasting 25 hours because I have not tested it for that long but it does last quite a long time on my skin I noticed that it actually stays the same on me for at least five hours before I get a little bit oily but I'm not that oily right now if it's hotter outside it actually stays really well. I went to the fair the other day with this on and I didn't have an issue with oil um, or anything like that or it transferring which was pretty good because we were outside for a good like three hours. So that's a good thing to keep in mind that it actually does work for the heat. I would just say that maybe after five hours if you are oily you will have to touch up. You might have to touch up a little bit sooner than that if you're super oily. Um, but if you have oily combination skin just note your T-zone you might want to set it. I did not set my foundation right now with a powder. I only set my under eye concealer with the powder. The rest has not been set with a powder. If you see some shine, I have some highlighter on, but on my chin and my nose and my forehead, except for here, I have highlighter. I did not set this foundation with a powder. So it does have a nice satin finish, not dewy or anything like that, which is really great. And I do feel like it does last quite a while. I think this will last at least an eight hour workday for me but um, even longer than that. But I, as far as it being 25 hours, I'm not entirely sure. I don't see it giving me a poreless effect. I can see my pores on my forehead and all of that. So I don't agree with that either, but it's not horrible, horrible pore. Like it doesn't, I don't know. It might blur it a little bit, but it's not like completely giving me a poreless effect. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So overall, I give this foundation a four out of five stars. There's pros and cons with everything. In foundations it's really just finding a foundation that works for you this is my personal opinion I have combination dry skin right now so this is what works for me I don't know if I'm gonna repurchase this though because I don't think that this is better than my L'Oreal true match and I think this is probably comparable to that but I like that one a lot better than this one 
Um, so for that, I wouldn't repurchase this. I would just go with my L'Oreal Tree Match if I wanted a foundation that had a similar coverage and finish to this one. I do think that if you are going to get this, this is going to be a really great everyday foundation for the summertime just because it does have that satin finish. If you like a glow or anything like that, if you don't want a super matte effect, this will work for everyday. It doesn't have full coverage and it's pretty inexpensive. So I think this is going to be my everyday foundation until I get a little bit darker. Um, when I tan, then this won't match me anymore, and I'll probably go back to my L'Oreal True Match, but we'll see what happens. That is it for this review. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this foundation that I didn't already cover, let me know down below. Um, I'm Hopefully this wasn't all over the place. I was trying to get as much information to you guys as possible without forgetting anything, but if I forgot anything, let me know. Thumbs up this video if you want to see more reviews, and if you have any products in particular that you would like me to review for you guys, let me know in a comment down below, and I would love to do that for you guys. I really want to do more reviews. I just have to figure out how to structure it in a way where it's informative for you guys. So if you guys like the way that this was, give it a thumbs up and let me know. If you didn't like it, if you want me to do first impressions instead or be a little bit more organized or something, just give me your feedback and I would love to do that for you guys. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Follow all my social medias which are down below. And I love you guys so much. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.